Hi guys, how are you? Happy Monday. Monday. <laughs> okay, just quickly, sorry, in my pens. I didn't write here. Uh, there's the date, Monday the 11th, grade 11. Zoom. Okay, now I've got a few algebra memos which I'll send you. Just let me get them. Um, the four I did yet on Friday, I will post that at the end of the lesson with the memo. And I think on Thursday I did this, but um, I've got to make the memo, which is a bit of a pain. I suddenly realize I don't have it. So send that memo late. Just got to quickly do it. Ma and yes, laptop. Your video was got okay. Never mind, it's back. What, Angel? My video must. Your video went away, but it's back, so it's okay. Oh, I'm so glad it's back. Oh, it would be horrible to leave you guys. So, um, yeah, I'll send all memos a bit later. But I thought today I'm going to revise exponents. Now you did exponents. In grade eight, nine, and ten. So you should actually remember all the rules. You've done every single rule. And in grade 10, you did all the simplification, but you will have forgotten what you know. And that is why I'm going to re remind you what you need to know. So let's start with the exponent rules. Okay, now as far as your exponent rules, you will get this from any textbook. So you can go to the section of exponents in your grade 11 textbook. You'll see all the rules there. I'll even photograph it out the book, all right? But just to remind you the basic seven rules, the basic seven, if you've got the same bases, one term, joined by times, but let's make this x4 times x. And obviously if you don't see an exponent, the exponent is a ghost plus one. Do you remember the rule since grade eight? You write down your base and you add the exponents. Okay, if it were the base was a number, for example, three to the two times three, there's two ways you could do that, all right? Method one is you could just write your base, you can add the exponents, so two plus one gives you three to the three, so my answer is 27. Or with numbers, I mean, you could have said 3 squared is 9 times 3. And you're still going to get your 27. But I just want you to know, because you get questions like this, if your base is the same and numerical, you could write your base down. Don't times the 3 times the 3 become 9. You just write your base, like here you wrote the base x, and you would add the powers, or the exponents, should I say, if the bases are joined by times. Okay, rule number two, if you get x to the four divided by x, which is a ghost one, remember if it's one term, same basis and you're dividing, you divide the exponents, like that. So you get x, not divide, subtract. <laughs> okay, divide, four minus one. Four minus one, which is three. I'm so sorry, I was just taking a few watching. Okay, now grade eight would have gone x to the four. Tula, 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 I can hear you. Yeah, now, if you were in grade eight, which please notice you're not, x to the four, you would have gone x times x times x times x. You would have divided that by x. And then you would have been left with, what's that? X to the one, two, three, okay? But guys, you're not in grade eight, you're grade 11. And I always tell my grade eights, imagine if that was 401 and that was 11. Ha, huh. they're not gonna finish their exam. And I promise you, if you go and watch your grade eight, that's what they do. So just take your top exponent minus, minus the second. If it's vertical, I mean, you know we can divide, we can say X to the, five divided by x to the two, it's still the same base dividing. So you would write your base and it's always your top exponent minus your bottom. So you're gonna get x to the three. With exponents, I want you to know it's an unsaid rule. Always, always leave 
your answer with a positive exponent or positive exponents, plural, expo, ex, exponents, okay? Um, so leave your answer with positive exponents. Um, it's an unsaid rule. So when we get to rule six, I'll remind you how to make a negative exponent positive. Okay, rule one and two, did in grade eight, nine, and ten. Rule three, also did in grade eight, nine, and ten. Any base to the exponent of zero is one. There is one exception. The base zero to the exponent of zero is not one. If you do that on your Casio, you will get maths error, and this is undefined. And I will prove to you why that is undefined. It is illogical. I will prove to you. I'll even prove to you why 2 to the exponent of 0 is 1. Maybe you never got shown this, and you're in grade 11, and they just told you the cookie monster engulfs you, and you become one person. I've seen strange stories. It's not very mathematical. So I will prove this to you using maths and not the cookie monster. Um, do you all agree that any number over itself is a one? There's only one exception, and that is naught divided by naught. Because you can't divide by naught, it's undefined. So that's the only value that is not one. Let's stick with the two divided by two is one. Do we all agree? I'll even draw you a ghost one so that you agree. It's visual. Any number over itself except for that is one. Now, do you agree that this base 2 has a positive 1 exponent? And in the denominator, the same base 2 also has a positive 1 exponent. Now, we have just learned that if you have the same bases and you divide, remember I said take your top exponent minus your bottom exponent. So the base is 2. So if you take your top exponent, which is 1, and you minus your bottom exponent, which is 1, do you see that drops? I get base 2 to the zero, but we know that that is one. So, if you get naught over naught, well first of all, it's not one, that is undefined. So, theoretically, you see one top exponent minus one is naught to naught, but you understand that is not one. So, because the fact naught over naught is not one, and that is why, theoretically, do you know, when you were in grade 8 and you got x to the naught, now you know in grade 8 they wanted you to write 1. I always tell my grade 11, 12, you could have shown off in grade 8 and said the answer is 1, but x can't be naught. You know, you just, my glasses just flew off. Um, that would show, yo, this is not just any grade 8, this is a grade 8 with brain, say, because they know that x is a variable, that variable is raised to the exponent of naught. And the variable can be any value in the world, but not naught. Uh, so you see, in grade 8, theoretically, if I had marked a grade 8 exam and you wrote that, I would have not given you the mark because I would have wanted the restriction on your base. Okay, uh, just common errors. If I give you minus 2x to the naught, please notice the coefficient of your x is minus 2. And it's only x that has the exponent of naught. So do you understand that would be minus 2 times that becomes the 1. Now I can see all that x can't be naught. But anyway, they don't expect you to write that. So you would get minus 2. If I wrote minus 2x to the 0, do you see the difference? Then the whole base, because of the bracket, is to the 0. So that is just 1. Again, x can't be zero, but uh, you know, a grade eight would have gone wrong with that. Okay, but you're not grade eight, you're grade 11. So let's go to rule four. Okay, there's no order to this. I'm never going to an exam say, quote, rule four. But rule four in my notes is if you have a base, exponent, exponent x. Sorry. So, the method, if you have an exponent raised to an exponent, so that would give you x to 2 times 4, which is 8. Do you, do you agree x squared to the exponent of 4 
means this base, which is x squared, times itself how many times? Times itself four times. That's what this means, isn't it? Base times itself that many times. And if you went back to that method, same base multiplied to powers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But again, that's probably how to do it. And that's why grade eights never finish their exams. So we know that if you have an exponent, rest exponent time. Okay, now what's probably gonna happen in the let's say two. Now I know that is eight. Two to the three is eight. That is the same as eight to the two x plus one. So they're the same because two to the three is eight. But more often than not, you'll see with exponents, no calculator, we break the base there into prime. Okay, so it's more often than not, you're gonna, if you get that, you would change it eight, you break it to two to the three, and then to the exponent of two x plus one. But your exponent, if it's two terms, is like a bracket, so you're gonna distribute multiply. So this would become two, to the 6x plus 3. So exponent raised to the exponent, you multiply, and if the exponent you're raising it to is two terms or more, you distribute multiply. Okay, so that's rule four. Not that I'm counting, but we've actually done four rules. Uh, Ma'am? Yeah. Are both answers correct? Okay. Are both answers correct? Are those answers great or are those answers eight? Are both answers correct? Because you wrote great. eight uh, to the power of two x plus okay. one, and then you wrote two. Either that, or it's eight to the two x plus one. Oh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Nice to hear voices. Nelly? Yes, ma'am. Hi! Oh, yeah, I can't believe I got the voice, eh? And normally you sit to the front on my right, which is your left. Oh, guys, I miss you. Do you miss being at school a little bit or not at all? A little. Next time I miss school a little bit. Not really, no. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We don't really miss you either. I'm um, <laughs> I, yeah, I actually find like there's almost I no need. point in getting up in the morning. It's just like, I feel like the world has stopped. <laughs> I don't know if you feel that, um, but anyway, it hasn't. And the minute we do go back to school, maths just like accelerates forward exponentially. So yeah, so just think of, and if it's a maths out your textbook. Agreed. You. Yeah. No. Okay. Carefully. If you have a base to a fractional exponent, exponent, which is up there in the sky, is a fraction. <laughs> yeah, no, that is quite logical, okay? A fractional exponent. <laughs> now, did you know you can rewrite this? So it looks different, but it's the same. You know the story like when you change from your school uniform into your matric dance outfit, you look very different, but you're the same. I use that a lot. So the denominator of the fractional exponent becomes the root. And there is the base eight to the numerator squared. So that means the same as, you should have learned this in grade eight. You can either go to root it, let's say that is two. And there's no ways I saw nine. I will just prove you immediately. Do you remember at least, let's say, in grade nine, they gave you factorize, and they might have given you x to the 12 minus, let's say, four. Now, if you were asked to factorize this, you had to make many terms into one. And in grade nine, this was the difference of two squares. Well, even in grade 11, it still is, because you've got two terms, t for two. There is a subtraction between them. So we say the difference. 
and each term you can square root. Now you might say, can you square root x to the 12? Well, can you? So you see, you did know this rule. So when you took the square root, you're taking the original exponent, dividing by the root, and you see that is x to the 6. Okay, so that would have been, if I said factorize, you would have gone bracket, bracket, plus, minus, that became x to the 6, and you wrote that in the front, and the square of the number 4 is 2. Just for interest, for the A students, if you got a nine, you would have said, oh, I can go more. No, you actually can't. <laughs> Sorry, you can't square root 2. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm sure everyone in grade 9 would have done that. Am I right? Quite. I think you've been muted out. Um, just in grade 10, you might have got x to the 4, I mean, ignore that, x to the 12, let's say minus, um, just bear with me, um, 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 let's go with 8, see if that works. So if I had said in grade 10, factorize, you would have seen that you can't square root, but, and can you cube root 12? Well, look here, there is 12. If you cube root 12, do you see that the cube root of 12 is 4? Okay, so uh, I'm talking absolute rubbish. You know what, ignore what I just said. <laughs> Okay, rewind. Okay, so if you wanted to take the cube root of x to the 12, sorry, x to the 12, the cube root, you would have divided your exponents and you would have got x to the 4. Okay, not 4. Um, so in other words, this is the difference of two cubes. Do you remember doing that in grade 10? Now, if you were doing the difference of two cubes, that is a cube, you could also do cubes. I said the ice cube. And if you take an ice cube out the fridge, do you agree it starts to melt? And the water is like tears. So it is a very soppy story. Soppy. Now, acronym that helps me with cube, and the S stands for same. The O stands and the P stands for positive, and this helped me with my. So, if you remember, if you had two terms, the difference of two cubes would open a binomial times a trinomial. Okay, the first sign here would be S the same as the question, then the next sign is opposite opposite and the last sign is always p for positive okay so same opposite positive then you cube rooted that so you've got x to the divide that by three so you get four so coming back to you you cube um, i'm talking rubbish just there sorry then just there it's been a while since I did this. You take this and you square it. So x to the 4 squared, you see x to the 8. If you take 2 and square it, you get 4. And in the middle, you just multiplied them, but you had the sign. So, sorry. <clears throat> sorry about the mistakes. It's Monday the 11th. What can I say? Remember, um, you also got, for example, y to the 3 plus, let's say, 27. So this is the sum of two cubes. We can cube root that, because if you divide by the cube root, three over three is y to the one. So you would get a binomial, trinomial, the signs, the first is s for the same, then opposite, then positive, cube root, cube root. Take this, square it, 
Take this to the back, square it. Three squared is nine. Multiply it, but you've got the sign. Okay, that's what I meant to do. So um, I'm just showing you, even though we're doing exponents, rule five, you have to know about that. Now it works both ways. So if I go back to rule five, if you remember the example I gave you was if I had eight to the uh, two divided by three fractional exponent. So that becomes the root. So it's the cube root and then it was of eight squared. The cube root of eight is just two and that became four. But guys, you've got to also go backwards. So if you get x to the fractional exponent of one over two, if the base is a variable, sometimes we want to, not always, but sometimes we want to write it, that would be the square root of x to the one. In other words, that's the square root of x. If you want to get out of that, sometimes you need to get out of that, like when we're in calculus, we can't differentiate with radicals, so we will go, that's to the exponent of both one, that is the square root, so you would divide the exponents and you would get the fractional exponent. So do you understand, this can go in like a circle. Now, rule number six, I'm gonna remind you how to make a negative exponent positive, but before I do that, I wanna see if you remember, quote, so, if I give you x times y squared over, let's just say, x to the 4 times y to the uh, y. Just, just y, no, y to the 3. Okay? Now, if you did it the subtraction method, you've got x, everything is joined by times or divide. So you would have your top exponent, which is a ghost one. You're dividing, so minus the bottom exponent, and then y, top exponent minus bottom exponent. It's to the negative three times y to the two minus three is minus one. Now, do you remember you learned, as long as everything's joined by times, you can jump the line and sign of the exponent. So that is the same as 1 over x to the positive 3 times y to the positive 1. So if you get, let's say, 2 over 3 to the minus 2, there's also that rule that says flip your base upside down, and then once you have done that, the exponent becomes positive. Right, and then you shower the power, so that would be nine over four. Now guys, quickly, I've got to get my son James just to go on his computer. He's got a Zoom lesson, and it's Afrikaans, and he's probably forgotten. So I'm going to rush off the room for literally one minute, but I'm always prepared. So no calculator. I'm giving you two. Okay, this example is grade nine. So we're going back two years. So let's say I gave you minus two x four y to the minus one over x to the minus one squared. Now guys, that's grade nine. So I want you to try it. Grade 10, you would have maybe got an example like this. X to the minus 1 plus y to the minus 1 over xy. Let's say they both three marks. So get out a piece of paper. Let's see what you do. Worst case is you do it wrong. And I'm just going out of the camera for one minute. Okay, see you in in minute. I'm back. That wasn't even a minute. 
Vienna, Sonic the Hedgehog. Guys, can I give you a clue how to do this? I would recommend if the exponent is positive, then just leave that and let's simplify inside. Okay? Now, because everything's joined by times and divide, then you can jump the line and change the sign of the exponent. So I could have written that as minus two times the original x to the four. Bring this up times x to the positive. Jump the line, change the sign of the exponent. Jump the line, change the sign of the exponent. There's more than one way to do that, but if I do it this method, then I got minus two, same basis, multiply, add the powers. And then you shower the power, okay? So a negative squared, positive, two squared is four, the exponent, raise the exponent, times five times two is 10, over, there's a ghost one, so times the exponent, y squared. Obviously, you don't need to show that plus. So that is typical grade nine. Now, if you had brought this down and that down, you get naught because now you have terms. So if you have terms separate by plus and minus, you can't jump the line, change the sign. But what I can do is to read that is my numerator divided by that is my denominator. So you can go the numerator in a bracket divided by my denominator, which is over a one. Then this is over a one and so is that. So you could just jump the line, change the sign of the exponent. So it goes from a minus one to a plus one. Jump the line, change the sign of the exponent. Divide by times and tip. So it's all coming back to you. Then you would go in the numerator into an LCD, which you can't drop, so you need a place for x and times y. My restrictions for interest, x can't be naught, y can't be naught, but they won't allocate marks for restrictions. x into x, y goes y, y divided into x, y goes x. Then the final answer in any order, you've got x plus y, two terms, or y plus x, over, now if you times that by that, then look at the x's, you would add the exponents, you're gonna get x squared y squared. Okay, very messy, so that is x plus y over x squared y squared. And no, you cannot cancel, because remember that is a flat bracket and you cannot cancel across plus plus signs. Is this coming back to you like slightly? Okay, you've been muted. Good for you, Heike. Just mute them out because they're so noisy. Okay, let's just revise quickly rule six, seven. Oh, you are there. Okay, rule seven, I want to remind you. If you've got different bases, and the bases have different exponents. There is nothing you can do. Nothing. So the best thing you can do is write them side by side with a dot, which means times. Guys, this is not. Do you see that means not? Okay, let's make sure it's not six to the x plus y, okay? It's not that, no. So if you have different bases raised to different exponents, you can do nothing. But if you have two to the x times three to the x, now you see that the exponents are the same. So here you have different bases, but to the same exponent, well then that's different. Then you can, in a bracket, 
times the two bases together to that same exponent. So that would become 6 to the x. So if the bases are different, but the exponents are the same, you could do that. But more often than not, you're going to notice we go in that direction. Have you noticed that from last year? We break into prime factors. Okay. But you might get something like that somewhere, especially next year, and a lot of you are going to go wrong there. You cannot do anything. Okay. Guys, the last thing I want to show you, it's not so much a rule, but it's just like to remind you quickly of a few things. If you get a fraction, a numerator over a denominator to an exponent, for example, x over 3 squared, I always say shower the power. So that just means your numerator to the exponent over the denominator. So you see I've showered the power. Don't ever leave an answer like that. That would be x squared over 9. If you have a fraction and you want to take the square root, you could take the square root of your numerator over the square root of your denominator. So if you've got like 4 over 25 under the square root, then you see it's the same as we get the square root of 4 over the square root of 25, which is 2 over 5. So just, just to remind you of little things like that. Okay, we don't have long. Let's just test your rules. So today, I'm doing nothing more than testing your rules. And I'm not using difficult examples. So, if I were to give you this. Oh, where are my pens? Dum, 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 dum. Okay. Um, so, let's say I say, simplify. They will always say no calculator. And then you see you have, this is grade nine. I thought I'd just tell you that in case you thought it's hard. Okay, so angels, simplify that, no calculator. And then when you've done that one, let's say number two, I give you the square root of A over A to the minus three over two in a bracket to the, what, one over two. Okay, so just in case you think this is hard, this is grade nine and possibly grade 10. So if you get any form of square root, divide the exponents. Jump the line, change the sign of the exponent. Sometimes you want to work inside and then outside. I'll give you two minutes to try those examples. Two minutes. Um, yes, I'm top. And the reason I has related, uh, but also when people start they put a lot of people. Oh, that's such a bad line. You know what? Um, when we finish the lesson, um, SMS me the question. Unless you want to try that again, but you broke up, so I couldn't hear that at all. You want to ask again? Otherwise, just SMS after the lesson. But do you agree? If I do the first one, do you see that's B to the 4 divided by 2? Right, I'll just prove that to you. If you're taking the square root, you divide by the square. Here is A, and then I'm going to jump the line, change the sign. So I'll put the B to the plus 1 in the numerator. So you see, I've gone from minus 1 to plus 1. Then do you see this would become B squared times B over A, and set as multiple exponents and that's as far as you could get if you told me that a can't be naught i'll be just very impressed with you because you you're, you're taking cognizance how's that for a word of your restrictions but you don't need to i was just showing off okay now the, the bell's going to go soon 
I know what you're thinking. You're thinking what, Bill? Am I right? Yes, ma'am, I'm thinking. Oh. Now, now, wait, we've still got two minutes. So, let's leave this. Ma'am, where's Bob? I'll, I'll bring it Bill now. Do we, that's a ghost Ma'am, where's one. Bob, ma'am? I'll yeah, Bob you, ma'am. Bob, he's on the piano. Okay, hold on. We're going to do that. So, do you agree that, that we divide the exponent? Okay, I'm going to jump the line, change the sign of the exponent. So that's a to the three over two. Now this goes one at the bottom. Same base, add the exponents, big side. Three over two plus one over two is four over two. Um, 55, we get a squared. And if you times that, you see that the twos cancel and you're left with a to the one. Okay, so guys, um, Hold on one second. Oh, holding, I'm holding. Good people. Okay, I'm back. Nap drops. If you open the very first page of your textbook, there are all the rules. Okay, and if we turn the next page, aha, uh -huh. exercise one and two, there's your homework. I want everyone to do that and mark your answers at the back of the book. All right, is that possible? Can we all do that? Yes. Bob says hi. Um, and here's uh, the no. bell. So now you can go to your next period. You've got two minutes to get there. <laughs> 